Hello, I am Jacob from Intrepid ProtoWorks. Today we are continuing our series on using statistics in Python. This is the third video in our series, and today we will be covering measures of dispersion. This includes range, interquartile range, variance, and standard deviation. To get started, we have the code that we did in our very first video, which is to open up the CSV file and grab the first 30,000 data points. We will start by making a list. We will name it just income and it will be empty for now. Then after that, we'll go ahead and make a for loop. This for loop will go ahead and fill that list with only the income variables. We'll start after the header and filter out any instances where the income is coded as non-applicable. In this case, coded as seven nines. We will then go ahead and append it to our just income list and we'll go ahead and do the integer value of the income. Now with the just income variable, we can calculate the min. We'll make a variable called min income and then we'll use the min function and input our list. And then we will do the exact same thing for the max by defining max income and taking the max. After that, it's just a matter of doing a calculated range, which is the max subtracted uh, by the minimum. With that in place, let's go ahead and set up a print command that will include our output. We'll go ahead and display the actual range as well as the start and end of our range. This will give us a picture of what our data set looks like. Hit save and run and we see that our range is 736,800. Now let's take a look at interquartile range. This will give us a sense of what the middle 50% of our population earns for income. We'll start this out the same way, make an empty list, and then follow that up with a for loop that will exclude our header, and then also filter out any instances of not applicable. We'll go ahead and then append this to the list that we made above. And we'll make sure to go ahead and define this as an integer, not as a string. We don't need to use a key to sort it this time because this list includes only one variable per row. Now we'll go ahead and grab our sample size real quick by taking the length of this uh, sorted data. To get the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentiles, we'll just multiply it by 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0 0.75 respectively. We do not need the 50th percentile in this case, but we're just grabbing it along the way. This is a fast and easy way to grab the median. We'll just take our 50th percentile and look at the income value at that point. We'll go ahead and take our Q1 income, which is our 25th percentile, our Q3, which is our 75th percentile incomes, and calculate our interquartile range by subtracting our 75th percentile by our 25th percentile. We'll go ahead and print this out and take a look at what our interquartile range is. We'll also take a look at our median as well as the 25th percentile and 75th percentile. This will continue to shape what the distribution of our income looks like. Lastly, we'll just go ahead and hit save and print once we have this all typed out. So we can see that our median is 25,000, our 25th percentile is 8,800, our 75th percentile is 45,000, and our interquartile range is 36,200. Now let's start looking at the variance. So to calculate the variance, we'll have to start by calculating the mean. We did this in our previous video looking at measures of central tendency. We'll go ahead and grab the sorted data a uh, list that we calculated before. We don't really need to do that over and over again. And we'll take the sample size and just divide it by the sum total of the income. Now to do that, we just throw it through a for loop where we add the total sum income to itself and the current row we are in. Then we just uh, divide the sum total income by the sample size, which will give us the mean. Then we'll go ahead and print this out real quick, take a look, make sure this matches to what we had last week, which was around $35,000 if I remember correctly. Yep. All right, so now that we have the mean, we can continue on to calculating our sum of squares. So statisticians aren't particularly original. The sum of squares is literally taking the squared value of the deviation score, where the deviation score is how different from the mean a given value is. And then we add all of those together, hence the sum of squares. We'll do this in another for loop. We're going through each row of our sorted data. We'll define our deviation score as the current row subtracted from the mean. 
and then we'll take this and multiply it by itself to give this square deviation score. This will make it so that every time we have a deviation, it's uh, positive. Otherwise, everything would just add to zero. This can be useful for checking your calculations, though. We we'll also want to go ahead and uh, check things real quick to make sure we don't have any, uh, any typos. Looks like we forgot to capitalize the O for sum of squares. Now let's go ahead and print out the sum of squares. This will be an astronomically large number, but it's useful to take a look at what it's supposed to look like. And then we'll go ahead and just hit save and run. We'll see 5904. That's longer than a credit card number. Let's con continue and calculate our variance. So we've done most of the hard work for calculating the variance now. All we need to do is just take the sum of squares and divide it by the sample size minus one. The minus one gives us the degrees of freedom. That's a concept we'll visit in more detail later on. Now the variance is more useful than the sum of squares, but it's still going to be a really big number. Let's go ahead and fix this uh, O not being capitalized again. And uh, where the variance comes in real handy now is in calculating the standard deviation. To do this, let's go ahead and import math real quick. And then we'll define a variable called SD and then just take the square root of our variance. We will need to just go ahead and tag math onto the front of this because this is a math related function in Python. Next, we'll go ahead and print out our standard deviation. The standard deviation is a concept that's going to crop up over and over again in statistics. It's, it's central. It's kind of similar to our interquartile range in that it gives us a sense of about how big the middle of our distribution is, which in this case, one standard deviation is $48,000. We'll continue to expand on the importance of the standard deviation in future videos as well. In our next video, we'll be looking at measures of the shape of a distribution, including skew, kurtosis, and the central limit theorem. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave any comments you might have about our videos.